I have been hesitant on posting any story, mainly due to the fact I don't want anyone ever thinking that I, or the person that the story is about, is crazy. Although saying this actually happened sounds very cliche, but I can assure you the following stories are true. Now, before I begin the first story, just a bit of background on me. I am an intern for a church that does work on Navajo Reservation site, helping the community on people's homes, you know, like roofing repair, repainting, and interior fixing. Eight to five, with good pay and nice people, so overall, I'm happy with this. And as a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not trying to offend any Navajo tradition in any way. This is just a first-hand story on what is currently happening on my trip. Over the past two months of my internship, I have begun to grow fairly close with some of the residents on the res. One lady in particular that I got to know pretty well was the superstitious type. Like I said, never be outside at night or other random seeming things to me. But the biggest taboo I knew to never mention, mainly because I was told by my superiors, like said never be outside at night, or other random seeming things to me like that. But the biggest taboo I knew was to never mention, mainly because I was told by my superiors was Navajo folklore like skinwalkers. However, one day it was very different in the sense that the question was just burning within me. I was on my lunch break after wrapping up painting parts of her house, and she sits next to me on her porch, and we talk for a while, but I finally feel comfortable enough to ask her about any folklore, about werewolves, or anything of that sorts. I didn't really expect a response. I thought maybe she'd quickly say no, and then change the topic, but if anything, I was more scared I may offend her. But, to my surprise, she turns her head, looking toward the outside scenery, hesitates, but then says, yes, I know some, and I've experienced it too. She proceeds to tell me a description on the apparent equivalent to a werewolf. To paraphrase, she said, werewolves look like normal people, but masked in white paint, covering their face, arms, and chest. Their whole body as white as a corpse, covered with black symbols, quite possibly related to devil worshipping. More specifically, they are gravediggers and necromancers as well. They dig bodies up only to steal jewelry, although they may perform other acts to corpses as she quickly strayed away from going into too much detail about that. Werewolves also get their power from the devil. That is how they are able to possess such supernatural strength and endurance. I was surprised to hear this, although I figured werewolves wouldn't look anything like that in Twilight or Scooby-Doo maybe. Although deep down, even though I thought she sounded a bit crazy, before I could ask more questions about these werewolves, she began to tell me her own interaction with these supernatural beasts, and her story gives me chills. She explained that one day, her and her husband were driving on the curvy roads alongside the mountains, only to find a woman with her face covered by her hands and was kneeling in the middle of the road, appearing as though she was crying. The woman looks up towards the car's headlights to reveal the very same white paint and sacrificial symbols mentioned previously. Her husband honked his horn and quickly slams on the brakes, only to be too late and hears the loud cracking sound of the woman's bones and the splash of blood all over the windshield. Once her and her husband stop the car safely and processed what the hell just happened, they quickly run over to the spot where they hit the woman. However, once they reached the spot, there was no body, but not only that, there was no trace of blood either. Just as a side note, this part of the res had some cliffs but it was relatively flat land, so it would be obvious to tell where someone is, especially if they just got hit by a car. Puzzled by what the possible explanation could be 
for this odd occurrence. Her and her husband drove back home, trying to neglect the thought that they had just witnessed a werewolf. However, being the non-paranormal believers they were at the time, they tried to just close this occurrence off as them just losing their minds. As interesting as her story was, this got me thinking, is it possible for this werewolf story to be true? Or is this her own way of describing a skinwalker or other supernatural phenomenon because she didn't think I knew what a skinwalker was? This question just kept circulating through my head. So as you could expect, the following nights made it harder for me to sleep comfortably. Because of that, during the work days I would feel more and more mentally drained, almost paranoid. At the end of the week, around 6, I was sitting in the car driving back to the church site and was in the mental state of mind where I was half awake and half asleep. My buddy was driving and claimed that he wanted to pull over to the gas station that was near the church just to grab a couple of snacks to munch on during our debrief time in our cabin. Since I was too tired to argue, I said fine and laid my face against the window and tried to doze off while waiting for my friend. However, I had the weirdest feeling that I was being watched. So naturally, I opened my eyes and looked out the window. I saw nothing. However, when I turned my head, out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw a white figure, just as the woman described previously. I looked back and nothing was there, but I swear I saw something. Since it was beginning to get darker outside, I quickly sat up in my seat to readjust my vision, but when I looked back out the window, it was almost as though the figure had vanished. Perplexed, I stepped outside the car and looked around, but there was no trace of a creature even existing. My buddy comes back to the car and questions what the hell I was doing, debating on whether or not I should tell him. I decided to just say, oh, I'm just getting some fresh air, let's head out. The following days have been even worse for me. My mood is getting worse. I'm feeling way more paranoid that something is out there. And at night, I can almost swear that I hear a scream in the distance. Everything outside just looks a hundred times scarier too, because there's barely any outside lights besides the moon. So everything has more of an exaggerated appearance. But believe me, I know I sound crazy. But the worst part is that if I tell anyone, they'll think I'm crazy too. So I've been debating whether or not I actually saw the werewolf that the lady described or if it was just my tired eyes maybe playing tricks on me. I hope someone can find some sort of answer to this werewolf mystery. Also, if you have any similar paranormal stories like this, please share. I'm trying my best to be more aware about this and if I find anything in the future, I will update you on my encounters or any other odd discoveries. Hi, I just wanted to write in to you about an experience I've had recently with these so-called dogmen. It's really changed my way I view the world and nonetheless terrifying. I feel like once you run into these things, it draws them to you. This happened to me just back in spring, back in it was still pretty wet outside and hadn't really gotten hot just yet. I live out in a much more rural area of the world. We have roughly 94 acres surrounding us, full of timber, thick brush, and a big creek that runs throughout. I was on my way back one night from a friend's party to my house, when I began to feel a strange feeling pulling up into my house. Now quick note before I go into any further details, when I was a little kid, we had a poltergeist at the house I grew up at, a very aggressive poltergeist that caused a lot of harm to my parents and I. I remember I would always know when it was in the room with me because I could feel the evil presence of this thing. This is the same evil presence I felt around my house. I sat there in the car looking around, 
things felt different. I wasn't quite sure what was going on, but whatever this was felt different. I slowly got out of my car and began walking towards the door, carefully. It was fairly dark outside considering it had been long after sundown. I don't remember the exact time. Before my hand could reach the handle to put the key in, I heard a deep, low guttural growl. I froze in place, slowly looking over my shoulder in the direction that it came from. It was nothing like anything I had ever heard before, but it did sound canine-like. It reminded me of a huge wolf, especially after growing up in the woods and hearing various animal noises. The growl continued on for a few seconds. I was so scared I was fumbling with the keys. It really felt like I was dropped into an 80s horror film. I really did think I was going to die right there on the spot. I was sure any second the thing making this sound was going to pounce upon me and devour me whole right where I stood. The growl sounded as though the creature was standing only feet away from behind my car. I refused to look out of fear of what I would see. It sounded so close. Whatever it was had to have been humongous. The bass alone in its growl, I could feel it throughout my entire body. I have never been so afraid. Until a few moments later, when I began to hear heavy, slow steps coming towards me. It was moving in quickly. I know because its strides had to have been enormous with how close it had gotten to me so quickly. By the time I plunged my keys in and had turned them and opened my door, this thing had to have been directly behind me. Once I was inside, I have no idea what was behind me because I simply never looked and I refused to. I never heard any sounds the rest of the night. I've lived in this house for a few years now and haven't felt any weird feelings or seen anything out of the ordinary. I've tried to look online for anything, and everything seems to point me in the direction of what's called the dogman, just based off the growling and the horrible feelings of fear. I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary that night, either. When I had left my home in the evening, all was fine and quiet, as it usually is. With 94 or so acres surrounding you, you often hear a lot of wildlife, and the occasional deer, but I've never felt anything like what I did that night. I've never seen anything weird out in the wilderness, nor have I heard anyone encountering anything strange. Like I said before, I've lived at this property a few years and we do get a lot of critters out here, but not what that thing was. There ain't nothing big enough out here to growl as loud as that thing sounded. I swear it could have been the size of a moose. Its presence alone terrified me, but what really scares me is how helpless I felt. It's like it was letting me know that it could have easily gotten me, and there is nothing I could have done. I felt like it left a mark on me. I don't know how to explain it. So, I was throwing some rotten tomatoes close to the tree line because I'm too lazy to walk down there and dump them. I threw one that came close to hitting the trees, and that's when I saw movement about five feet above the ground. Not really leaves or branches moving, more like a shadow moving if that makes any sense. I stood completely still and just listened to what I thought was breathing. I thought maybe it was possibly wind doing something weird going through the leaves, but to me it sounded like breathing. I continued to stand there, focusing on the spot where the shadow had moved, and saw what looked like a pointy ear, not ears. I couldn't see the other half. First thought was that it looked like a big dog, but from what I could see, which wasn't much, I threw the final bad tomato in that direction and saw the shadow move quickly back, followed by two to three heavy steps, and that's it. I just stood there thinking, nah, I'm just tired from work, go to bed. This happened about four weeks ago, shortly before my vacation. While on my vacation, I kept thinking about what the hell that was, 
and tried to do some quick research while relaxing poolside and kept coming across dogman sightings. Upon my return, nothing more has happened. No shadows, no moving, no growling or any other stuff people report when encountering this thing. I don't really know what to think. I'm hoping if it was something, it moved on. I work full time and do a lot of side projects and have kids in sports, so I'm pretty much a walking zombie. I still just can't shake that feeling that what I saw was just not my imagination. If anything, I will set up some game cams and I guess have some deer hunting and possibly an audio recorder. I know it's kind of lengthy, but I just needed to get this off my chest and maybe get some advice from anyone out there who has experienced something similar. If it was just me living here, I wouldn't really care about just one measly encounter, but my boys, they play outside, and I really wouldn't want anything to happen to them, knowing that something this size is potentially roaming around. I had stayed at my friend's place by Lansing for a couple of weeks and decided to take off and head towards the shore of Lake Michigan, up through Petoskey and over the Upper Peninsula. It was dark by the time I got to Pentwater, a small resort town on the shore of Lake Michigan in the western part of the state. I was kind of confused at a stop sign and lurched to a stop, started and stopped. I looked up and there was a police officer, stopped over to my right. I decided to make a right turn and then turn into a neighborhood. I made my way back to the main road and took a right. As I turned back on the main road, I saw a small hill going up into a wooded area on the left. I saw some sort of animal in the grassy area between the road and the trees. I thought to myself, oh cool, I'm going to see some wildlife like a possum or a badger or something. But as I got near it, it seemed to move in a very unnatural way for an animal like that. Sort of too fast and too jerky as it ran to the side and then down the hill. It appeared to be brown and reddish tobacco colored and furry. It looked much larger too, more like a human size. After I passed it, I looked up in my rearview mirror the animal had stood up on its hind legs and ran across the street, leaning over with its front arms hanging down. Classic werewolf-type horror movie pose. I had been planning on camping out in that area, but now, no way. I drove over two hours before I stopped after that. I am an outdoorsman. I am very experienced in hunting, camping, hiking, and general survival. I'm very familiar and used to all kinds of wildlife, and I was charged by what I believe was a cryptid called the Dogman. It charged me and my cousin. It was not a bear. A bear cannot move how it did, and it was not a normal wolf, as they can't comfortably run on two legs, whereas what charged us seemed natural at doing that. I can elaborate further if you wish. This happened back around June or July of 2007, I believe. I was around 17 years old and more cocky then, but still somewhat knowledgeable of the outdoors around me. My family used to own a cabin in northwestern Wisconsin. I basically grew up there in the summer. I knew the woods well, but at night it was wise to stay in the cabin or at least by the bonfire by the beach, just because of bears, wolves, and cougars. One of the creepiest things was, if you were having a bonfire, the tree line was visible from the fire pit and beach, and at night, you always felt like you were being watched from that tree line. But during the day, the woods always seemed normal, not so creepy at all. That is, until this incident. So this happened somewhere between midnight and 3 in the morning. Me and my cousin were having an airsoft battle. I was in full woodland camo. He was not. 
I retreated onto the ATV trail into the woods for a tactical advantage, and our battle took us about 200 meters in, to about a third of the way up the trail. We had enough at this point and were standing at the edge of a clearing on the trail, talking, and he was maybe 10 feet from me, when I decided to mess with him. I shushed him and said, We're being watched. He froze. Then I realized the woods were dead quiet, and I got spooked and started scanning the tree line and the other edge of the clearing from left to right when I saw it. Its teeth gave it away. It was panting and staring at my cousin. I don't expect you to believe me, but what I saw was a wolf as big as a black bear, at least 300 pounds. But it wasn't normal. This wolf was on two legs, crouching next to a tree, with its arm grasping the tree, grasping with a clawed hand. It had reddish-brown fur. I told my cousin that, we have to go. And the next thing I know, he is sprinting, and I look back at Wolfie, who had locked on and sprinted a few steps on two feet. And then I turned and I ran, when it looked like Wolfie was dropping to all fours. This thing charged us and sounded right on our asses barreling through the brush. But for whatever reason, let us go when we broke out of the tree line and headed for the cabin. What stuck with me the most was the sheer size. Wolfie appeared to be nearly seven feet tall when upright, and that where it should have had the front paws, it appeared to have large clawed hands. Now I'm not sure how to explain it away rationally. I have heard wolves will occasionally kind of walk upright, but as far as I know, they can't sprint on two legs. Nor do wolves even get that big. And black bears more waddle on two legs. The closest description is silly. A werewolf or dogman. Thank you for reading. Like, I believe my town has something like 247 people in it. Everybody knows everybody. Weird things have happened before, like animals being slaughtered or going missing, you know, that sort of thing. Naturally, we chalked it up to coyotes or other critters. See, I'm an avid hunter, so I was heading out to the woods with my bow, a fully decked out Matthew's Creed. I got out a little earlier than usual, so it was still pretty dark. I've never minded the woods before, so all I planned on doing was relaxing in my stand for a while, as I didn't feel like stalking today. It's not too far away from daylight, so the birds and other wildlife are starting to make their morning calls. Usually pretty peaceful, right? I swear to God, in the span of a second, Everything in that patch of woods shut up at the exact same time. Dead silence. It didn't even try to be subtle. That alone scared the piss out of me. So naturally, my scared self froze and just listened for anything. My first thought was, Oh shit, something's out here with me. Which freaked me out even more. Then I started to think maybe it was just a bear or a bobcat which was still terrified to meet up with, but at least gave me a logical answer. I figured I could hear a bear coming, but I knew big cats were renowned for stalking people without their knowing, which scared the daylight out of me. I decided to keep moving towards my stand, post up, and just point my bow down the tree. After what seemed like forever, I freaking made it. I shuffled up the stand, pulled out my knife, just in case, and just listened. Dawn was definitely breaking now, which made me feel much better. Still though, no sounds of wildlife, which was getting more and more eerie by the second. Now, my stand is perched on the side of a creek. The creek wasn't very deep, like maybe to the top of your ankle. About the only sound I could hear was the slight noise of running water. Then I hear something to my right, and it is running fast. I instantly raise my bow and wait, shitting my pants in the moment. It's getting louder and louder and closer. I almost screamed when I saw this bastard. 
It literally looked like something out of the movie Dog Soldiers, only a little bit more muscular. This thing busted through the brush, ran down the slope, and through the creek, then disappeared on the other side. I've seen some stuff, let me tell you, but I was shaking like a newborn baby. I didn't ease off my drawstring for like 10 minutes, which, for those of you who don't know, is an incredibly long time to hold a bow, FYI. I mean, this thing was huge, like 6'5 to 7'5, 250 pounds of just no. And I've seen bears and the like before. They do not run like that. Anyway, after that, the sun really started to show and the birds began chirping again. I had calmed myself down after a while, so I noped out of there in a hurry. While I was terrified at the time, it's definitely going to be one of my coolest memories to look back on. I'm just going to move my stand and hopefully hunt elsewhere. My name is Ronald. I'm 20 years old and I live near a small town in Wayne County, West Virginia. My family and I originally lived in Jacksonville, Florida during my childhood, but we eventually moved up north because we couldn't handle the humidity and oncoming hurricanes. Now, what I'm about to tell you guys is 100% true and I swear upon my life that what I've experienced is something I will never forget. It was last autumn, on August 27th, 2017, when my experiences first began. It was a Saturday evening, between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m., I think it was. I was driving home from taking an incredibly long drive. I drove from my home to the town of Wayne, then past Tulsa and Louisa, and finally as far as Chapmansville. I guess I drove way too far for my liking. Anyway, it was getting dark and eventually found my way home in the form of a road called 8th Street that led me to Mount Union Road. It was the road that took me straight to the house of one of my dad's friends, Ezra, where there was this road called Walnut Gap Road, and that was where it takes me home. Now, on this road, there's a blind curve next to an old, abandoned white church, in which I always slow down on before driving around the curve, just to make sure nobody was going to come flying around the corner that night. Now, right as soon as I do that, there's a six-foot ledge on the left side of the road where some small trees have fallen over, whereas on the other side, there's a steep hillside that has a path cleared through the thick underbrush where deer like to hide in. And right at that same spot is where my first encounter happened. Just as I slowly drove around the corner, I saw this thing step onto the road on all fours. When I first saw it, I thought it was a 500 pound male black bear because it was roughly the same size as one and we do tend to have a few roaming around where I currently live. But then I noticed that it was actually more like a wolf because it had a long bushy tail and pointed ears and a canine-like snout and the same body shape as a wolf with jet black hair and glowing amber colored eyes. By the time it stepped out onto the road, the wolf had turned its head towards my direction and stared right at me. I was ecstatic at first to actually see a wolf in the wild, but... At the same time, I realized that there was something rather off about this thing, about my encounter. There shouldn't be a wolf out there this big. In fact, the more I think about it, there shouldn't even be any wolves out here in West Virginia anymore, since the timber wolves that once lived in these woods were killed off. Was the state government secretly using conservation efforts to repopulate wolves here in the state? Did a pack of wolves escape from a wildlife sanctuary and somehow found their way here? If so, then how did this get so freaking huge? Not only did the wolf's abnormal size catch my attention, so did the look in its eyes. They looked different from what I've seen in the eyes of any canine I know of. They looked much more intelligent than anything 
of any animal I've seen. Whatever theory I've had to support any rational explanation for this unusual sighting were immediately shot away when this creature did something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life, something that still haunts my very soul to this day. When we both stared at one another, even while I'm inside of my car, I heard what sounds like bones popping loudly, and to my absolute shock, I watched this wolf place its hand on top of my car hood, raise itself off the ground, and stand up on two legs. Yeah, you heard me right. It wasn't a paw it placed on my car hood. It was a hand. When the wolf stood up and my headlights hit it square on, that's when I got a really good look at this thing. It was easily eight feet tall, easily, and weighed roughly around 600 to 650 pounds or more. As I said, it was covered in jet black hair that seemed quite feral in my opinion, as if it hasn't been cleaning himself that much. And it also had a long bushy tail and two glowing amber yellow eyes. To my shock, it was more than a wolf standing on its hind legs. It had a human-like torso from the waist up that appeared pretty muscular with broad shoulders and long forearms, longer than those of normal human beings. I could see the muscles of this wolf man pulsating with each breath it took, especially with the headlights lighting it up. It also had these dexterous hands that looked almost like raccoon hands, but with more elongated fingers and long jet black claws at each fingertip. They looked like they could be used to easily manipulate any kind of prey in its clutches, and they looked like they could easily rip me to shreds. Or maybe they can do more than just that. The hind legs resembled more of those of a dog or a wolf. They were haunched. This I can easily tell you because they bent backwards and had these massive paws for feet, from the looks of which it was standing on its toes more than its feet. It had a massive head similar to that of a wolf or a large German shepherd, but much bigger in proportion with pointed ears and tufts of fur at the tip of each ear, as well as a long muzzle with these great big fangs gouging out at the front of its snout. To be honest with you, the fangs had a very eerie resemblance to those of a saber-toothed cat, but the rest of it just looked like a werewolf. But the eyes... The eyes were the one thing, the only thing about my encounter that night, that I'll never forget. And even writing about it to you all right now sends a bone-chilling fear down my spine. As I've said to you prior, the eyes looked extremely intelligent, far smarter than any animal I've come to know in my neck of the woods. But they also held a feeling that told me I was looking into the eyes of something that just spelled evil out of them. Finally, I gained this overwhelming sense of dread after seeing it walk to my side of the car on two legs, slowly bent down to level its eyes with mine, and I froze in pure, unadulterated terror when it used its hand to jiggle the door handle to try and open my car door. Fortunately, all the doors to my car were locked and every window was closed but this still horrified me to a point where I couldn't even breathe. This wolfman, as I previously referred to it as, gave out a grunt and actually frowned at me for a few seconds before standing back and walking to the other side of my car, and it jiggled the other door handle adjacent to the passenger side. Whatever this thing was, it was intelligent enough to know what a doorknob, or in this case, a door handle is for. At this point, I was absolutely shaking in my seat with the same fear still latched onto my soul. Have you ever been through an experience in your life where, even though you've known all your life that you're an apex predator, you find yourself going out into the wilderness alone, and you suddenly feel so weak, so vulnerable, so helpless in the eyes of such a beast like this? That's exactly how I felt in the time of my encounter. I felt like this thing, a creature that shouldn't even exist, yet was standing right there in front of my car, was the true ruler of the forest, 
and we humans were nothing compared to what it can really do. It could have easily ripped the doors off my car and pulled me out. It could have caught up to me if I tried to escape, and even if I tried to scream for help, it wasn't going to help me because I knew how powerful this predator was, even if I didn't know it yet. Just by looking at the wolfman, I knew a human being wouldn't have stood a chance, and I knew that it knew that I knew. I honestly thought I was going to die, that my family and my friends would never see me again, that they would never know what was happened to me, or how I was killed or eaten alive by something that nobody else believes exists, and that there was nothing I could do about it. However, none of that ever happened. It was as if God himself was watching over me that night, protecting me from the malevolent beast that was circling me. Instead of attacking me head on, the wolfman bared its teeth at me and let out an extremely deafening snarl before walking around the front side of my car, crossing the road on its hind legs in just two steps. The encounter didn't end there though. By the time it crossed the road, it paused for a couple of seconds before it slowly turned around to look at me one last time. As soon as it did that, I could have sworn right then and there that it wasn't alone. I looked over its shoulders and I could see multiple pairs of eyes staring directly at me. I knew they were of the same creature as the first one because they held the same eye shine and gave off the same growls. I estimate that I saw at least five other pairs of eyes staring at me. Three of them were low on the ground on all fours. The other two were standing upright, but they didn't reveal themselves out of the darkness like the first one did. In my opinion, I think he might have been the alpha male of his pack. If you all think encountering one werewolf-like creature was terrifying enough, imagine how I felt when I saw there was more than one. With that scary thought, I snapped out of my trance and decided to get the hell out. I slammed hard on my accelerator, and I bolted away and drove out of there like a bat out of hell. I'm not pulling your leg here, but the distance from right where I was when I saw those things to my home, I literally arrived home and pulled into the garage in just one minute. By the time I arrived, I was in tears. I've never felt that scared before in my entire life, and not only that, that was the first time I've cried that much in a long time. My parents were concerned about the state I was in and asked me what had happened. I basically told them everything that transpired just before I pulled in. Now, I may have made up different stories and stuff before, but that was only when I was little, and whatever I've experienced wasn't a joke. I told them the whole truth with honesty, but terror in my voice. But, of course, they didn't believe me. They just assumed what I saw could have been a black bear, and driving after dark like that makes your mind play tricks on you. But this wasn't a trick I saw. I was 19 at the time, but I respected the DUI, so I wasn't drunk while driving home that night. I wasn't dreaming off this incident, nor was I hallucinating it. It wasn't even a simple misidentification. I know what I saw, and there's no doubt in my mind that it was real. After this encounter, it's affected me so much that I was forced to isolate myself from everybody I know, including my family and friends, for a little over a month or two, but I eventually broke out of my shell and got back into my social life again. However, I took this time to do some intense research on what I saw, and that's when I came upon the dogman phenomenon for the first time. According to several eyewitness testimonies, people have reported seeing the exact same creature all over the U.S. and even in some remote parts of the world. This in turn filled me with relief, knowing that I wasn't alone, that there are people out there who swear on their lives and even to this day and what they saw out there were real. They're not a haunting part of humanity's imagination like we all believe them to be. Monsters do exist in this world, and this fact alone makes us realize how small our world really is. To me, it makes me wonder that if a pack of werewolf-like creatures can exist, 
than what else could be out there lurking in the shadows, watching us with intelligent eyes, waiting for us to prove their existence in man's world. 